There's something weird going on here and there and there. We need to check this out. Strange stripes are appearing in my lawn a couple days after mowing. These lines seem to be uniformly spaced and it's showing up all across my yard. Now if you're seeing a problem in your lawn, the best thing to do is to get down into the grass for a closer inspection. Now the tips of my grass seem to be shredded in the patterned area. Remember, you're actually wounding the grass each time you cut it. If your mower blades aren't sharp, your grass will get shredded. Instead of having clean cuts, the shredded tips of grass blades will turn white as it slowly heals its wounds. Now panning over a few inches, the grass blades seem to have a cleaner cut. I'm currently mowing with a McLean reel mower and the dustpan I'm holding is simulating my mower and the route I walked when cutting the grass. Notice that the lines fall on the right side of my mower indicating that it's the side of the reel that's misaligned or dull. Here I'm doing a paper test checking the sharpness of my reel. I'm using a standard weight printer paper as it closely represents the thickness of the grass blades. The paper is cutting fine until I reach the far right side, confirming that it's the cause of the weird stripe patterns in my lawn. This far right side is dull and it needs to be sharpened. So on to backlapping. The first thing that needs to be done is to remove the chain cover and the chain using a half inch socket. Now if you're wondering, I placed this label here for reference to the cutting height of my mower. You can find this reference in your lawnmower manual and if you've lost your mower manual, a simple google search will find what you're looking for. To remove the chain, you first want to locate the master link. You want to remove the retaining clip and remove the chain from the mower. Now the next thing you want to do is to loosen the four adjustment bolts of the real cylinder. There are two bolts on the left side. This one is hard to get to with it being behind the sprocket. I actually had to use a hammer to tap it a little to loosen it. Now there's two more bolts on the right side. For these bolts, you want to turn it counterclockwise. Now you don't want to take them off, just loosen them slightly. Now that the reel has been loosened, you can attach your back lapping adapter to the reel cylinder sprocket. I got my adapter from reelrollers.com. I'll leave a link in the description if you're interested in getting one. I've modified my adapter by adding a few extra washers and nuts. On the three outside nuts, I've grinded it down on my bench grinder so that it would have a lower profile. I'll show you the reason for this in just a little bit.
Now the backlapping adapter was intended to be free floating on the sprocket, relying only on the force you apply to it with your drill to keep it in place. The modifications I've made to the adapter allows me to tighten the adapter onto the sprocket so I don't have to worry about adding that extra pressure to keep the adapter aligned with the sprocket. You can see here just how firmly the adapter connects to my real cylinder sprocket. This way I can better focus my attention to the reel while I backlap. For the backlap, I'm using a Bauer 13 amp half inch right angle drill, which I picked up from Harbor Freight. It has a powerful motor that outperforms your standard battery powered drill. I actually smoked my DeWalt battery powered drill on a previous backlap as it ran too long while under heavy loads that a decent backlapping grind would require. This is how it hooks up to the backlapping adapter. Another feature that I like about this drill for backlapping is its ability to rotate the trigger of the drill so that it makes it more comfortable to operate it smoothly while backlapping. Remember to set your drill to run counterclockwise as we're trying to backlap the cylinder. In other words, the reel needs to spin in reverse compared to the normal cutting rotation. Here I'm applying 120 grit paste to the cylinder with the reel adjustment screws completely loose. I find that 120 grit is perfect to achieve a sharp, clean edge on the reel blade without being too aggressive. The initial grind doesn't do much in terms of sharpening, however, it does help to settle the reel onto the bed knife evenly. After a couple of minutes of the initial grind, it's time to start tightening up the reel adjustment screws. It's a good idea to tighten the side of the reel that gives you the most problems. For me, it's the right side of my cylinder. You want to rotate the reel so that one of its reel blades is sitting directly on top of the bed knife. Once you've aligned the reel blade to the bed knife, you want to tap the reel adjustment tab slightly with a hammer. This ensures that the reel blade firmly contacts the bed knife. Here, I'm slightly tightening the right adjustment bolts to semi-lock the position of the reel of the right side of the mower. Now I'm rotating the cylinder manually and I'm feeling for the right amount of pressure against the bed knife without excessive pressure of being overly tight. Next, you'll want to repeat the previous steps to lock in the opposite sides of the cylinder to your mower. Remember to manually rotate the cylinder so that the reel blades on the opposite side is sitting directly on the bed knife before tapping it down and tightening it up. Apply more paste and continue to backlap for a few minutes. Continue to add more backlapping paste every so often. Continue to add more backlapping paste every so often.
once you've given the back lap sufficient time, you want to tighten fully all of the real cylinder adjustment screws. Yep, it's on. <clears throat> Another round of compound and back lapping will help polish off and finalize the reel to bed knife contact. Once you're satisfied with the back lap, it's time to rinse off the back lapping compound from the reel and the mortar. Now I'm not gonna lie, things can and will get messy. Back lapping paste will fly everywhere, so be sure to wear clothes you don't mind getting dirty and the proper PPE as such as eye protection. I use the same brush that I use for back lapping to clean up the reel. Don't be afraid to spray some water on your mower, but just be aware that it's not advisable to blast water directly into the bearings on either side of the reel. Now as the back blacking compound gets washed away, the fruits of your labor begin to show off. Dry your mower and check your reel for sharpness again. Cut, 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 cut. While you have the chain accessible, it's a good time to lube it up. I'm using a chain and cable lubricant made by Blaster which I picked up at my local O'Reilly's Auto Parts store. I spray on a generous amount and I wipe off the excess with paper towel. This chain and cable lubricant is also excellent for the throttle cable on your mower. Here, I reattach the chain and I took notice of the slack. I'm going to keep an eye on the slack as it seems a little loose, but it's good enough for now. Replace the chain cover and you're in the home stretch now. Now there's one last thing in this back lapping process that's going to be unique to me and that's to put on this bad boy right here. This is Pest and Lan Jinja's keychain that he sent over. Thanks Pest and Lan Jinja. You can check him out at Pest and Lan Jinja on YouTube. He has some awesome tips and tricks on diagnosing your lawn and getting it fixed the right way. He's going to be the captain of my ship. Full pirate flags raised. Oh yeah, baby. Oh yeah.